Okay, and this is part two of the honeycomb install video. Uh, we're going to do the final setup and some quirks and workarounds. Uh, this is going to be a shorter video, um, and I wanted to keep this separate just so it's easier for people who want to who have an install or have gotten that far and didn't need the beginning part, and uh, they just want to jump in and say uh, XOR is causing problems or um, I'm having this issue, maybe uh, this will help them out and so they can figure out the easiest way to get things up and running for them. Uh, so let's uh, pick up where we left off. This is where um, Fedora 35 is doing the generic setup. Um, do not need this on mine. Let's this. Skip that. Okay, so here. And again, this is being just set up as a generic setup for me. Um, you just do. Okay, and now we're done with the setup. So one of the first things you're gonna notice and I know not all installations do this, is we have no um, graphics acceleration. This is all being run through software. And the reason for that is because um, Fedora's installer, and others might be different, uh, picked up on the module that we blacklisted, which was the graphics driver, and uh, has, um, not loaded it on boot, which is fine because there are some some quirks here that, that we need to do in order to work around um, some of the limitations we found. Uh, so the first thing, I'm just gonna do this all as root. Really, you should run sudo commands individually, but uh, I don't wanna keep typing it. And so I'm just gonna do this as root. Um, I do as I say and as I do, I don't know whatever that setting is. So the first thing we need to do is go into modprobe.t and you're gonna see that Anaconda, the installer, has blacklisted our AMD GPU module. So we're just gonna remove that because we won't need that blacklisted anymore. And then now we're gonna set up um, the persistent um, settings that let it, let it to always boot up, get networking to work, and those sorts of things. And on Fedora, we do we use the grubby command. Um, other places, you have to edit it in Etsy. Again, this isn't really a, this is the way to do it on Fedora, or this is the right way to do it. This is just how I do it, and these are the quirks that you need. Um, every distribution might need might need these settings in a different place. You might edit your grub.cfg yourself. It might be a, a file that, that's an Etsy and you need to regenerate things. Um, so what I do now is we're going to add the kernel command line args that we want to happen every time. So, And I'm sorry about my typing. This is my secondary keyboard and it is not the best. Um, so um, what we're going to do is the we're going to set up the bypassing of the SMMU by default. Uh, SMMU .stable bypass equals zero. One. And so after that, two other things that I generally set up on my desktop. Uh, well, one you, you're going to need and this is, and this can be set on the kernel command line, or it can be set up in your um, mod probe module options. Is we're going to set um, AMD GPUs PCIe Gen Cap um, to. Uh, we're going to lock this in at um, oops, zero x four. Um, we're going to lock that in. Um, at uh, the PCI Gen 3 uh, X8 
Um, basically, for power savings, uh, it'll ramp up and down the bus, the PCI bus, making using more lanes or less or faster speeds. And what we want to do is we found a, a bug where when it's switching really fast, this can call, cause extra GPU lockups. Um, since this is a workstation, it's not a laptop, we're not saving a lot of power by um, doing all this fancy power saving stuff. Um, you can get a much more stable system by just locking this in with this uh, command line parameter. And then finally, I generally set um, USB core. I disable auto suspend um, by saying that to negative one. And that's just a personal preference. I'm, I don't like when my USB devices, especially mouse and keyboard, if they're wireless, it can take a little while for them to wake up and cause issues. So these are just the options that I use to make the most stable system. Personal preference, you guys do what you like, but uh, th these are here if, if you need to use them. Uh, and then we're going to, because we only have one kernel, we're gonna just update all of them. Okay, and so that's done. Um, now, uh, the other thing that I do on my system, and this is very sp uh, Fedora specific, is because it uses uh, Dracut, is in the init RAMFS, I like to, um, actually, and you know what's probably easiest, if I can just copy and paste this off of my just, um, so we're gonna open a web browser here, Firefox is fine. Um, is I like to include the AMD GPU driver in my init RAM FS and the firmwares. Uh, it just, I don't know what that is. So networking is working, I don't know what that is. Um, and so, Okay, well, I guess I'll do it the old way uh, and just type it in is, so basically I like to include all my AMD uh, GPU modules, so, and and really this just gives you that nicer I, this is more of a live stream thing, so I apologize if this isn't as concise and my keyboard is not behaving. Oh, there we go. Um, and, and then we need to include the firmwares. Um, one thing to note is that some of the distros, I believe it's Debian. Um, you might not necessarily get the AMD GPU firmware it's by default, and so you wanna make sure that those are installed. And since this is a Polaris card, I will just take, and they're compressed, I take all of these items, and then Okay, and then we save this. And since we've made the module changes, um, what we're going to do is now uh, rebuild our init RAM FS. And again, none of this is ARM64 specific. This is all just using Fedora, it just works. Um, all the commands are, are basically the same. Um, so really there's nothing special here. So after we make these changes, we're gonna reboot the system once more. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna show you a couple of um, the 
errata that are that are existing and what we need to do to um, kind of work around those. Um, by default, the uh, Wayland desktop and GTK3 and um, um, KDE using it have very, like they're, they run great. There are no rendering issues. Xorg with the Glamour driver, we're still seeing some graphical, graphical corruption uh, and we do have workarounds. I do have patches that I've uh, submitted for these um, for to glibc and Mesa, but as of yet, we really haven't got any made any progress in getting those accepted by the maintainers. So uh, now, what I'm going to do is give us a quick restart, and so now this is going to boot the system with those options that I've added to the kernel command line. Um, this, uh, because of what we booted last time, the, uh, the whole system should just boot direct to a, uh, desktop for us once it's done. And we shouldn't have to worry about that any longer. So we'll go into boot manager. We'll fix. Oh, this is because the ordering is uh, wrong and that's where the error was. So here, what we'll do is go into the boot maintenance, maintenance man, uh, manager and uh, we'll go into boot options and change our boot order. Um, that got messed up. And what we need to do is just, I mean, really you can, if you don't want these, these can all be uh, deleted. Again, this is a very standard UEFI um, BIOS. So uh, you should be very comfortable with it. You can learn about it. There's lots of online documentation. This is not uh, honeycomb specific. This is just part of the Tiano Core EDK2 project. And so then we use F10 to save. Okay, and now we should be able to um, there. And then go up to here. And here we go, uh, going through our standard booting. And you see we have, there is a glitch in it, it's not completely glitch free, but you get the nice graphical uh, Fedora UEFI boot screen using the GOP driver. And then it will uh, switch over to the uh, AMD GPU driver once the kernel loads. Uh, and then we should boot up into our GDM user manager. And here we are. And so now I will log in as myself. And here you'll see everything. It's all 3D accelerated. I mean, obviously this is going through an HDMI capture, so we're it's not gonna be perfect F for you. For me, it's nice and smooth. Um, we can see that it is, we have our uh, GLX info. Um, our networking is working. Uh, we should have a snap, okay. And so now the the one issue that we're gonna see is if, if we were using an Xorg instead of a Wayland system, uh, GTK3 apps are corrupt. And so there's two things that we need to do to fix that. The main one is I have a patch for Mesa, which um, fixes the problem. Although it's not included in any of the distributions because it's not included by mainline. If you just want to fix the problem, then the easiest fix, uh, if I can type properly, is to go into So ideally, oops, oh yeah. So you have to make um, an m.d directory. And these are, uh, GDM uses this to uh, create the user environment variables that it loads for the session. And we're using this to 
as a simple way to uh, disable the Mesa extension that triggers the bug in the XOR Glamour driver. Um, and this is a simpler way. The better way is definitely to have a patch Mesa. Um, but if you just want your system to get up and running, you can do this until you build your own Mesa. And what's great with the Honeycomb is it is capable. You can do a build of Mesa in, in like less than half an hour. It's not like you're gonna be hours and hours waiting for it. And so what we do is a Mesa extension override. And we um, need to turn off Um, the other, there is work in Mesa going on where these extensions um, can be set to DRIRC. Uh, that would be a much better way for us to do this, um, even if we don't get the patch in, because then you can actually only set this environment variable for um, XORG and XWayland, which is really the only place that needs it. I, we really haven't seen. Um, many other games that are affected by these issues or those sorts of things. Um, but by setting that there, unfortunately, that disables um, the persistent buffer sto buffer option in Mesa, uh, part of the GL 4.3 spec, I think. Uh, I might be wrong. You can correct me in the comments below. But uh, um, while it fixes the problem, it sets it for all other games. So you would need to unset that environment variable before running the game if the game does need it for performance reasons or, or consistency. Um, so, the, and then the other piece, and I will um, only get to mention this um, um, because um, there are, we found two OpenGL instances where there's another issue that's run into. And we found this uh, as an issue, it was actually originally brought up about five years ago for our Macchiato bin platform when very early graphics driver support for our ARM64 was being done. And that's when using glibc's mem memcopy to directly write to uh, memmap PCI VRAM, uh, we were seeing corruption. And I've actually narrowed that down. Um, I've narrowed down the instances where those failures are happening. And it, it always happens if on writes that are uh, 96 to 105 um, bytes long. I know it's, it's very generic, but what happens is the way glibc does mem copy, it overlaps those regions for, um, you know, for consistency and performance. And the overlapping um, causes uh, right combining corruption. And so what I've done is uh, I've provided, uh, this is my rep repository. What I've actually done is I've taken um, ARM's optimized libraries that they have on their GitHub and uh, taken just the mem copy. Uh, and what you can do is you can uh, take this project, you can compile it, and then you can um, create a, a file etsy ld.so.preload on your system and point it to this library. You can either you know set the environment variable like we did and preload it, or you can actually use the etsy ld.so.preload and preload this um, library, which basically over, over you know, replaces the generic glibc mem copy, and that fixes the issue. Um, this part, uh, if you're seeing issues, you can add it. It's not 100% needed. Um, really, the two main places where we had reproducible issues, um, besides my test program, are the um, on mine test game, and then if you're running glmark2, the terrain benchmark uh, also showed it where um, textures weren't uploaded properly. Um, we do have a workaround. Uh, I have opened a bug 
in glibc uh, just like for the amd gpu issues i've added i have bugs open for those projects um, you can do under my name john and email john at solid-run.com uh, and so you can uh, you can track them there again find us on discord um, but once you've done all these things um, you'll you'll find that everything's up and running just fine uh, I haven't even tested this on the install, but uh, let's uh, we can try a quick WebGL sample to see if Firefox has uh, 3D support. And uh, you can see that everything's running. The system's stable. Um, we have, uh, you know, it's it's an RX 550, so it's we're not talking about the fastest GPU, but it'll do 4K. Um, you know, it'll, it'll run at your 3d desktop. It'll do some minor gaming. You know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna do great, but you know, here, even here we have, a, you know, 40 frames per second on a 1080p, uh, in, in Firefox. I think Chromium and actually it'll do 60 frames per second, but, um, I hope this helps. Uh, if you're interested and you want to see like a gaming video or uh, I'll probably do a uh, cover the networking complex at some point. Um, the next one I'm going to do is on our IMX 8M plus uh, with the Basler camera system. So we're going to do some uh, vision processing and some camera setup. So hope you're finding these informative. Leave us comments. Tell us what you'd like. And uh, I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye.